good. Lay your hand up on my head. Let your people see your miracle. As your holy, who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. I am on the Lord's side. Ah, who is on the Lord's side? We want to know. I we want to know. I am on the Lord's side, and the Lord is by my side. So long as I live, so long as I live, I am on the Lord's side. Grace to you and peace from Him who is and who was and who is to come. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for always being with us, even here this morning, as we come to worship you. Help us that by the power of your word, the word that became flesh, the word you sent down to overcome the world and bring us back, Following him, we may individually and as a congregation and church be able to overcome the world that surrounds us and become fit, which is eternal, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 1 John 1 to 5. 1 John 5 1 to Five. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah is a child of God, and whoever loves a father loves his child also. This is how we know that we love God's children. It is by loving God and obeying his commands. For our love for God means that we obey his commands. And his commands are not too hard for us because every child of God is able to defeat the world. And we win the victory over the world by means of our faith. Who can defeat the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. You can overcome. You can overcome. A question lies before us. Who can defeat the world? Just any kind of person cannot defeat the world. Many cannot defeat the world or overcome it. They just choose to be part of it. But the Bible tells us that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Who then can overcome? Who can defeat the world? I say you can overcome. We are living in a world that is fast depreciating. When we look at all the scientific developments, we are tempted to think that the world is moving forward. Yes, even forward. In which direction? I say in the direction of destruction. In the direction that one day it will no longer exist. Gone are those days when you could leave your door open and even go on a journey, come back, and nothing is missing. But if you just want to see the world in which we live, just take a look, put some soil inside, move along the road and drop 
After 20 meters, come back, whether it will be there. It is dropping, somebody is just praying. Let him go without noticing it, and he will pick it up. Those days that you could boil vegetable and drink the excess water, if you do that today, not drinking the natural water, but some kind of chemical, which will give you trouble in the long run. Those troubles we are undergoing today, I can say they are man-made. They are man-made. But whether they are man-made or they come from unknown sources, you can overcome them. The Bible simply calls such as the world. The world here is both external and internal. The external world is made of those things outside there that, at, that pull you away from God and attract you towards the path of destruction. The world within, the world, the internal world is made of those things that come out of you. Jesus said, what man is what comes out of him. Those things inside you that push you away from God and therefore towards the direction of destruction are what I call the internal world. You can overcome both. Is it the nightmares you have been having? Is it the unknown illnesses? Is it the corona we are talking about every day? Is it unemployment and poverty? Is it addictions of any form? Is it the disappointment and failures you have been facing? You can overcome them. But the question is, you who? Who are the you that can overcome them? Our text tells us that it is the child of God who can the world, who can defeat the world. But still, who is a child of God? Who is a child of God? Have, you, have we ever seen God in a hospital or maternity delivering a child? No. Then who is a child of God? Our text tells us certain things about who a child of God is. And the first one is that a child of God, she, who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, the long hour who was to come and save us from destruction. We notice that the whole book of John is written so that you may believe. From John 20, 31, we can see that after the resurrection, Jesus performed many miracles which are not written. But a few we see and the things we hear about him are that that you may believe. When you believe, that belief, if you, will lead you to a certain possession of power with which you can overcome. The that is leading us to the second aspect concerning who a child of God is. A child of God is he or she that loves the Son of God, that loves the children of God, and so loves God. You cannot say you love God when you don't love his child, when you don't love his children. So a child of God is the one that loves God's children and loves God. And this love 
is to obey the commands of God. Obeying the commands of God. The love we are talking about cannot be separated from action. It cannot be separated from belief, from faith and action. We see that action in God's love for us. In giving his only son, Jesus, to come and die for us. God showed his love in action. Imagine God said a lot that he loves us. But at a time, we needed him. We needed to go back to him. He disappeared. Then all the singing is nothing. You cannot say you love us, and at the time we need you, you remain silent. You disappear. That is not love at all. Love is love when it has acted. So, people of God, how do you show your love for God? How do you show your love for God's children? How do you show your love for his son? Is it by word of mouth? Lord, someone. But at times, we are tempted to take evil advice. Not so with you, child of God. Many are tempted to take evil advice, thinking that they are their huge and prosperous family can do everything. No. It can, you only do anything with the strength that God provides. You do anything with the strength that he provides. Which what we are. You forget who you are and concentrate on who that person is. You, you take your time, go to the tailor, make sure your clothes is, is, is shows them. When you wear them, you don't look at it and appreciate, but your eyes are on what the other person is wearing. You start appreciating as if you are naked. We forget what we are and concentrate on what other people are. So that in times of problems, we mistrust our ability as children of God and rush to someone, maybe a prophet, a man of God, or what many people are introducing in the dictionary as Papa. Between a child of God and a man of God, who is greater? Is it a man of God or a child of God? Rushing to a man of God is like water in a like 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 carrying water in the bucket and forcing it into a little glass. When you carry a glass of water and throw it into the stream, you are wasting your time. But it looks more ridiculous to carry a whole bucket of water and you want to force it. If it does, then that should be magic. If you do not know, know that. What the father has belongs to the child. If not of the child, me in particular, I would not have been doing anything but what I have worked could have been enough for me to eat until the time God will call. But it's because of the child that you see an old father, an old mother, still struggling until the time that he leaves the world. A child is the blood of the father. If a child does not have the blood of the father, then the mother should be guilty of something. And if the blood of the father is in the child, then the life of the father should be in the child. And if the life of the father is in the child, the child does what the father does. So, 
So who is greater? The child or a shepherd? A man of God is only a servant. And before Jesus, there were many servants, but none of them was a child of God. They came and went, prophets and kings, but none of them was a child. Jesus, even many call him as prophet, he is one with a difference. He is the one that is a child. The child in the house with all authority. So you being a child because of him, you can overcome the world. You can overcome the world. Even if we make mistakes and concentrate on what other people are, how do you know that a man of God you are running to is a child? Because there's a possibility that a man of God can be at the same time a child. But how do you know that this one is a child of God? Some people pronounce Jesus, they preach Jesus, but they don't believe in it. The miracles they perform are not that you believe. They are for money. They are for their own name. Because very soon, they start getting some name, like the, the Christians or the followers are worshipping by that person. For you, a child of God, it should not be like that. With God in you, you can overcome. But unfortunately, many have chosen the wrong way. The way of unbelief and hatred. Disobedience. And you name the rest. Thinking that with force and money, they can do everything. They cannot. As I said, Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through him who gives me the power who gives me the strength. And that is found in his word, in the word of the Lord. Learn it. Meditate on it. Obey it and practice it. Put your trust in what you are learning. Walk with it. Move 